Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another word problem dealing with trigonometry with right angle triangles. So you are looking at a building at an angle of elevation of 20 degrees. You move 15 meters closer to the building and the angle of elevation changes to 50 degrees. And from that information, we have to figure out how high is the building. So let's draw a diagram here. So let's say the building is right there. This is the ground. And let's say that right now, initially, you are right here. Okay. And so what's happening is that when you're looking up at the building, this is the line of sight here, the angle of elevation is 20 degrees. Remember the angle of elevation and depression, right? This is the angle of elevation. This is the angle of depression. It's always from the horizontal whatever that is, whether that's a sky, whether that's the ground, like in this case, it's always from a horizontal line that you create the angle of elevation or the angle of depression, right? So in this case, the horizontal is the ground. So the angle of elevation is 20 degrees. Now, what happens is <clears throat> you move 15 meters closer to the building. So from here to here, let's actually move it a little bit closer let's say right there, that is 15 meters. And when you do that, now the angle of elevation changes to what? 50 degrees, like that. Okay, so here it was 20, you move 15 meters closer to the building, now it changed to 50. And now what we have to find is the height of this building right here. Now there's actually multiple ways to do this. You can do this with something called the sine law as well, using this triangle. Notice that there's three triangles. So there's this right angle triangle, the large one. Then there's this smaller one. Those are the two that we're gonna be using in this video. But then there's also this third one that you could potentially use using something called the sine law. But we haven't covered that in this course up until this point. So I'm not gonna be using sine law. I'm only gonna be using those primary trig ratios that we've gone through, sine, cos, or tan, okay? And to use those, you need to be always using right angle triangles. This triangle here is a non-right angle triangle, and we're gonna cover that, cover those types of triangles in the next unit. So what can we do here? Well, let's draw out the two, um, right angle triangles that we have. So let's draw this smaller one first. So we would end up with this being 50 degrees here, and this is H, that's what we are solving for. Now, for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna label this side here as X, okay? But because we don't have this side labeled, but we do need a label for it because when we draw this bigger right angle triangle, we're gonna have to have an expression for this entire side. Right now, we only have an expression from here to here. We know that that's 15 meters. Well, now I'm just adding this variable X here to be from here to there. Okay, and so now when we draw this larger triangle, what's gonna happen is we got this 90 degrees here, we got this H right there, that's 20 degrees, and then notice that this entire side here would be 15 plus X, like that. Okay, so we drew two different right angle triangles, but notice that both the triangles, they contain this side H here that we are solving for. Question is, how can we do that? Well, notice that because we have two triangles here, we can create two equations using trig ratios, and we're gonna have two unknowns, and if we have two equations, two unknowns, we can use substitution or elimination to solve for those unknowns, for the unknown variables, which in this case is the H and the X. So I'm gonna erase that initial triangle since we don't need it anymore. We just need these two. And I'm gonna create some equations here. So now look, notice that this is the reference angle that we're using, this 50 degrees. Well, notice that this side here that's attached to it is the adjacent side, right? Because this side here is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always uh, opposite to the 90 degrees. So that means that this other side that's attached to the 50 is the adjacent side means that this H here is the opposite side. And so which ratio uses the opposite and the adjacent? Tan, so we can go tan 50 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, like that. 
So there's one equation that we created. Then we could create another equation over here. Uh, if we use this 20 degrees as the reference, well, again, this is the opposite side. This here would be the adjacent side, this 15 plus x. And then the side that is opposite to the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. We're not going to be using that, but I'll label it anyway. So what would happen here is the other equation that we can create is we can go, okay, tan 20 is equal to the opposite, which is the h again, over the adjacent, which is 15 plus x, like that. And so now notice we have two equations and two unknowns that we could solve for. So we could do this with substitution or elimination. What I'm going to do, I'm going to isolate for the h in both of these. So 1 times h is h. We could cross multiply and then we'll have x times 10 of 50. Let's leave that as it is. So we have h equals x tan 50 and then over here cross multiply h equals tan 20 times the 15 plus x that has to go in brackets. And so now notice we have two expressions for h. h is equal to this or h is equal to this. Well that means that this and this have to equal as well. And so we can create a, another equation there. Right? Or we're doing, it's like we're doing substitution. We're taking this expression for h and plugging it in for this h over here. So let me erase these triangles here just to give myself some room for this algebra. So basically, again, taking this expression, plugging it in for this h, so we would end up with x times tan 50 uh, equals tan 20 in brackets, times the 15 plus x, right? Both of these expressions are equal to the height, so we can make both of them equal. And now notice we have uh, one equation in terms of only one variable to solve, right? We only have an x in this variable that we have to solve for. And when you do the steps here, what would happen is for this tan 50, you would get 1.19, so I just attached it with the x here, then tan 20, as a decimal is 0.364, then you could distribute the 0.364 in the bracket, you end up with this, bring the 0.364x over, and then this minus that, because it's a positive here, when it comes over it becomes a negative, you get 0.826x, and you got the 5.46, and then from here, what can happen is you could just divide both sides by 0.826, like that. And so this, this cancel out, what you would get here is approximately 6.61. So that's what the x value would end up being. And then what you could do is you could take that x value and plug it into here or here to solve for the h value. Remember, we're trying to get the height of the building. I feel like this one is easier, right? You don't have to do as many steps. So you'll have 6.61 times the 10 of 50, and that would give you 7.88 like that. And then this is in meters here. And so that ends up being our final answer right there. That is the height of the building. So what we have to do is split up that diagram into two right angle triangles. They both shared this side h. Then I brought in a new variable for that missing piece, which was x, created two equations, and then I was able to solve for the two unknowns using substitution. I just made those two expressions for h equal, solve for x, then I could take the x, plug it back in to get our final h value.